My name is Peter Johnson, and I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of using FileZilla with a T server. Go ahead and load up FileZilla. And when you have it running, you'll notice along the top there's a place to put in host, username, password. I don't usually use these Quick Connect because then I have to type them in every time I go to the site. So instead, I go up to this icon in the upper left and set up my site there. Now you'll probably want to click on New Site and call it something to do with a T server so you know what it is. And you can see here that I have lots of websites that I maintain with FileZilla. So you click on a new site and then here's the different fields that you'll fill in. For the host, you want to put in Peter J, or I'm sorry, your first name, your last initial, and then .t .southcentral.edu. For the port, just keep it blank. And on the server type, there's a drop-down. You want to use the plain FTP. Some servers will ask for secure FTP, and that would be your FTPS. Also on your port, some servers request a specific port for security reasons, and uh, that's where you would put that in. For your logon type, you can do the drop down, and instead of anonymous, you want to select normal. Your username can't be any longer than eight characters. That's one of the, the limitations set up by the server administrator. And it's very much like your host name, it's your first name and your last initial. Now, there's a T on the end of mine, that's because the administrator set me up with a T but I've set all your accounts up with your first name, last initial, and no T. And if you go past eight characters, you have a long first name, just drop back so it'll, it'll be just the first eight characters. Your password is your school ID, and that includes the lead, leading zeros. You can add a comment down here, something about the T-server or your computer careers, web server, whatever you like, just so you know what that, that's for and then hit the connect button. Now these are the panels of FileZilla. Up at the top you can see your error messages and your connection messages, so you can see that we've connected correctly. If you don't get a uh, valid connection, go back and double check your file name and your host name and your password. Those are the three things that are almost always wrong. These other two panels are the folder structure. On the left here, this is the folder structure for your hard drive or your computer. And on the right, this is the folder system for the server. And you can see that we're out at the root because it has that slash there. Now these often take a lot of space, so I go up on these icons at the top and I close those out. So they're still there if you need them. but. It, it saves just to look at the, at the structure itself. In order to view your web pages, you're going to have to go to the public underscore HTML folder. So if you double click on that out on the server, yours will probably be empty. You'll probably have a folder with two dots. Uh, mine has some files in it already, so you can see how the files are set up. And over on the left, this is my file structure out on my web on my uh, local computer. So you, you can right mouse click on these files and then you can upload it. So like on this index file, I select it, right mouse click, and then I upload. And it's going to go right up into here on the server. Now if I want to upload some graphics, I would open up my graphic folder and out on my server open up my graphic folder and then I could do again right mouse click or select right mouse click and upload. And if you look down at the bottom you'll see any any queued files. Sometimes you'll transfer 100 200 files for a large website and you'll see the counter down here in the tab showing how many files are in the queue and how many are yet to be done or how many have finished. Now, it gets very tiresome whenever you go out to a website 
to always go out to your public underscore HTML folder. So I'm going to go back here to my root. And again, you can see that I'm at the root here when I look at the remote site. I see that slash. But if I go back to my site manager and make sure you're at the T drive and go into advanced, then you can select your local directory and you can just browse out to your local directory. and locate where that's at and you can put your remote directory and if I move this over you'll see that I want to go to public underscore HTML so I'll just type in public underscore HTML leave everything else as it is and maybe I have to start it from the root. Ah, so that's what I had to do. So now, when I go out and reconnect, it asks me if I want to break my connection. I say yes. And when I reconnect, it automatically goes into my public underscore HTML folder off of my root, so I'm in my working directory right away. One final thing to note is notice how everything on my hard drive over here on the left matches what I have out on my server. You want these two to be a mirror of each other. So do all your work out on your hard drive or your flash drive and then transfer copies of everything including the folder structure up to your server. If you stay organized that way it will reduce your errors uh, tenfold and Everything you'll do locally will be able to be duplicated on the server, keeping your life much, much simpler. Also think of this as a one-way street. You're going to go from your hard drive out to the server. Don't start taking files from the server and moving them backwards, unless maybe you have a hard drive crash and you have to reconstruct some files. But normally you always want to go from your hard drive out to the server. That way you'll have a one-way flow of information and you know that your originals are on your hard drive and your duplicates are on your server. So that shows you how to use FileZilla and once you have your files uploaded to the T server here's how you view them. Now if you look on the room remote, site, remote site side you'll see public underscore HTML. This is the folder that you're in and these are the files out on the server. So let's bring a browser in and what I do is I resize my browser so I can see the address bar and my uh, file names. So I'm going to type in my site name which is peterj.t.southcentral.edu and if I just leave it at that, it's going to go into my public underscore HTML folder and display my index HTML. So let's try that and see what happens. And there's my website. Now, if I want to go into Living Links, and let me open this up, and you'll see Living Links doesn't have an index HTML, so I'll have to type in edit PHP. So looking up here at my remote site I see I have to go into the living links folder so this you can think of this Peter Johnson South Central EDU as my public underscore HTML and then I put in my living link from the path and then edit PHP. And notice if I don't do the edit PHP, there's no index. So on the T server, we have it set up so it shows you all your files. Normally this is uh, poor, poor practice. A real server won't do this. They'll have this turned out because it is a security risk. But you're using the T server to learn, so this will show you if you don't call out a file name, 
what you, what you can choose. And you can see by the maroon that I've already been out to edit PHP. So again, you put in your site name and then use your remote site address link as your path and your file names to determine what to put on your browser address bar for your URL. So let's just go out again back to Peter K. Johnson, Peter J., and look at my, my host. And that will be pointing at this file right here. You can use FileZilla with virtually every uh, web server that's out there, as long as you know the host, the user ID, and the password, and the port.